Hey guys, Jason Sam Koviak here with Sam Co Workshop. Today we're going to talk about trailer maintenance. Okay, you have to go around these things and check them. What are you looking for? What do you want to check out? How do you fix this stuff? We're going to cover that real quick because if you own a trailer, odds are you're going to have to work on them. There's just no two ways around it. Um, they're designed to be um, beat up going down the road. They get buffeted. They get shook around. These sides are constantly flapping in the wind. This thing, the fenders are bouncing around. Uh, axles are going through abuse. I mean, this thing's just, yeah, I mean, it's a trailer. They get beat up as they get used. And uh, it's up to you to maintain them. And it's good to take a minute and check stuff out. I noticed this today when I was coming back. Okay, how floppy that is. Well, there is a screw. I love that they do this. They got one screw down there in that corner, one in that corner, and one right there. And they go right into the frame and hold it, but that one fell out. Okay, uh, well, it didn't fall out. Actually, I should say it was all the way out. I went to turn it back in, and it stripped out. So it's in my pocket. We got to get a bigger one, okay, because it whipped, rip, it just stripped right through. So we got to fix that uh, to get this back up there and staying well. Um, these are the things you got to watch for and check out. Notice, I got to replace my grease seal see it starting to leak right there okay that just popped through again keep in mind my trailer is on the road daily and gets this crap beat out of it gets used religiously here so uh but here too look at this one cracking okay going bad uh we are still okay with our screws on this one and this fender is solid okay so we're good there but you want to check all this stuff start from the front and then work your way back. Start from here, make sure everything is good, make sure everything's functional, hit, you know, your maintenance stuff, lube some of these things, obviously, but just double check everything. But check these bolts too, around the bottom, around here, that's a glue line, so we're good there, that's glued up, but see how we got them still out there? Check your lights, we still got two bolts in it. Okay, we look here, my ladder rack, still got the bolts in it, we still got the bolts across the top. We're still doing good through there. We still got them because these will snap off. Again, things will break. Uh, we come down here, everything looks good. You can see on this fan, oh, I'm missing one more. I had to replace one here uh, last year. Look, we're missing another one, so I have to replace one. But again, see that thing moves and it just beats them up. But I need another screw to put into there. That light's still screwed on. We still have our bolts there. We know the fender's good. We have our bolts along the bottom. Hinges are still working good. The bolts are still good in the hinges and in our rain guard. So we move on to the other side. We go around on the back. Well, well we're going to leave the back down, but check things on here. Check your rim. Check every one of these things. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to check. That light's good. That's good. That's my mistake from a different ladder rack I was going to use. But you can see here like this. Now notice this one. See how that one's got a little gap between it right there? I might have to snug that down. It could be creeping out, or it might just be the way the bracket is. I don't remember, but we will check that. That light's still good. Look at all the ones I had to replace in this. The blacks were original. The silver ones are ones that I had to replace in this. Oh, and look here, okay? Look at this, okay? It just, it, like I said, it wore itself through the sheet metal to the point where it's just not even biting anymore into the metal. It's just sitting, it, you know, it's chewed through. Gotta fix that. Okay, that has to be fixed. We check all these bolts all the way down. Again, you check all of this stuff all the way around. You'll find that you'll have to replace trim pieces uh, or bolts that go through trim pieces. This is just part of the game. There's no two ways around this. Uh, when you have a trailer, you have to do the maintenance on it. Um, the beauty of this trailer, and there's a reason that I chose it. See, if you have twin, or tandem axles, which maybe the job you're doing requires it, but if you have tandem axles, you now have four tires versus two tires. You now have brakes on there, an electronic controlled brake box. You have two sets of brakes you have to mess with. All, the more involved or the more ex expensive you get, the more uh, bigger you, size you go, the more stuff you have to regularly deal with. For me, this is nice because it does. I max this trailer out right at 20, 2,900 pounds, so it's it's literally maxed out. But it gives me just two sets of tires I got to worry about, one axle, no brakes, lube or redoing the bearings, which I will show you when I do it, and I grease those, I will show you a video of it. Uh, not, and I'm not talking just popping this and putting grease in. I mean, when you actually take them out and uh, go through them and double check that the bearings are all good, we'll do a video on that. But, um, you know, real simple maintenance on a single axle trailer, but you still have to do the maintenance. Go under here, get under here with fluid film and coat your axles. Okay, coat all that stuff with fluid film, which I have not done yet this year, but we will. But coat that stuff with fluid film to keep it protected. And same with the inside. Check this stuff. Make sure everything is good here. You have Zerk fittings. 
okay on the bottom of this hinge on the outside you probably do but they are those are greasable make sure you're greasing that stuff check everything in your stuff go through everywhere and just double check and make sure you have no broken welds you know you want to just take a minute every every three two or three trips or four trips and just double check everything and make sure it's all good make sure these don't have it aren't broke a lot of times the wind will buffet these like see how that one's bent in Right there, see how hard that's bent right against my door? It's actually rubbing on my door. That is from pulling, I'm bending it back now. Okay, that was because of the fact that this door swung from the wind and bent that bracket back, okay? But again, things that you wanna check and make sure nothing snapped out of there and busted off and uh, you just go through. It doesn't take long to go through and make sure things are good. Just make sure everything's working right on these. Don't get carried away with these. These are very dangerous. If you don't know how to handle these or what to do with them, have some, take it somewhere and let them do it if it needs service. But you should have good tension on both cables. Should be about equal tension there and make sure they're working right. You know, that's this is just simple stuff. Wiring lights, check them. Plug in your lights, make sure, uh, plug them in, turn your lights on and walk around the whole place. Make sure all your lights are working. If they're not, usually it's something as simple as a bad ground. Notice here, okay? We got black screws in that one. Okay, that's how it comes. I've had to replace that screw in that one. And that one had a bad ground in it. So I had to even recock that corner of it. But um, I got it fixed. But you watch for this stuff and see what is and isn't working. So check all of that stuff out. And it's also not a bad idea once in a while to go up on top of your roof especially if it's not a one piece but even if it is around the edges just check that if you got any parts up there that look like the sealant is cracking um and that kind of stuff hit it with some self-leveling uh you know self-leveling sealant up there and it will uh you know it'll redo those and keep that protected so no water's coming into your trailer just a little bit of quick and simple maintenance will make a tremendous difference this we gotta fix otherwise i'm gonna be breaking these wires that are in here it's gonna be a real nightmare i'm probably not worried about recaulking this because when i put it back on we'll be fine but we need to get that bolted too i'm going to put a big bigger size bolt into that hole longer or oversized we'll see wish i was in georgia where i have all of this stuff already but now i don't i gotta go i'm working out of a little tool my little tool kit this rental house and i gotta go buy um self tappers to do this but uh but see there's where the beam is the cross beam inside of here is there the frame rail there is not one over here that's why they have that one there but um, i'm going to put a bigger one in there and see if that holds it good and locks it down. If not, I will probably run a skinny, smaller one that's longer and re-drill a self-tapper right in here and go straight through here and come out right through the wood on this side. Actually, not self-tapper, I mean a, a uh, bolt. And I'll let that poke through wherever it is. I'll let it pop out through the wood and I'll put a washer and a nut on it and that'll hold it if I have to. So I got options because I think this is that stud that that fender's in so it'd probably be somewhere right in here down lower but i that's what i would do if if that doesn't work that's my next go-to option would be to uh just use a drill and drill a hole through there i'd go right through right there and get right where my finger is right there and i drill right through the fender through this wall and straight because there's no support back there there's no metal frame right here i would then shoot it straight into um into the wood of the trailer and put a washer on the backside. so but again it is always something to do always something that has to be fixed always something needs to be maintained you'll want to have some of these these are all self tappers okay these are everything on here is basically a self tapper type scenario for the screws they don't pre-drill these holes they just run self tappers a self tapper is this i have the original one it just came out of there in my pocket okay here is a self tapper it's got a cutting end on it. See that end is designed to drill as it goes and then the thread starts. So it's a self tapper. So it actually drills the hole and then puts it in for you at the same time. They work fantastic. Use these things on so much, but the, that's this whole thing is put together with self tappers. And uh, so having size tens and size twelves and different, you know, three quarter inch and one inch, having those available for a trailer definitely come in very handy for you. So, all right, that was your little uh, video on trailer maintenance and uh, keep it clean too as well. Mine is obviously quite dirty, I, but I've been down two dirt roads today and uh, you know I'm, I'm using it every single day but try to maintain it keep it clean keep your your wheel or your hubs lubed uh, take care of it it'll last you for a long time but this little bit of maintenance stuff goes a long way like I said you can see how many times I've had one of them fall out of this again this whole thing buffets 
okay that whole thing buffets and it can only withstand so much in that thin metal and that's a 30 gauge too or it's not gauge i get in trouble for that that is a 0 0.030 thickness siding okay a lot of trailers are a 0 0.024 so it's even thinner than this um and it gets even worse so uh like i said to make sure you take your time go around them double check stuff keep it all working right for you thanks for watching